Tables turned. 500 Wagner soldiers sabotaged Russians in Bakhmut. There are also very big losses for the Russian military aviation, making them lose up to 90 planes. And to make things even worse for them, the key city defenses in the south already looks like finally breached and Russians they kinda gave up and started retreating. But more about all this in just a couple of minutes. What's happened yesterday? It's the Russian dude. And let's get straight to the point and talk about some ridiculous Russian propaganda. Ooh. So yes, <laughs> new intro. But uh, long story short, uh, Russians recently created these playing uh, cards, which somehow tell you the characteristics of your personality and also predict the future. And they put corresponding politicians and world leaders on this cards. Basically, Putin is obviously for them is the king, the emperor of the world. Zelensky is just a clown and joker. And then there is also <laughs> president of Belarus, Alexander Lukashenko, who is a very brave, according to them, person. Just let me know in the comments if you agree that Putin, according to these cards, must be the world's most powerful leader and emperor. Personally, I do not think so. <laughs> and also these cards also have some other world leaders and politicians, such as for example Joe Biden, Rajab Erdogan and Xi Jinping and much more. You can see all the other playing cards on my Patreon, the link will be down below. But okay, now let's really quickly talk about some mind-blowing statistics of the Russian planes losses. And then I'll give you a quick update from the south, where the defenses of the key city are breached before finalizing everything in the east, where Wagners are sabotaging. And so yes, first of all, speaking about the planes, we also do have some extremely good news from the US. Finally, Ukrainian pilots started training how to use these planes, and the very first classes they have to go through is the this plane-specific English language. Besides that, the Secretary General of NATO Jens Stoltenberg recently visited Kiev, spoke with President Zelensky, and as a result of their conversation, NATO is pledging 2.4 2 billion euros military support package to Ukraine. Besides that, the ministers of defense of the Great Britain and France also visited Kiev and they spoke mainly about the air defense of the country. But Ukraine obviously does not rely solely on support by the West. For example, the Army of Drones organization sent approximately 1700 different drones to the front lines. And additionally, Ukrainian manufacturer of 120 mm mortars finished the test of these mortars and now will be sending them to Ukraine as well. And so, what about Russia? Well, Russia also has its partners, such as for example Iran. And recently, these two countries are in talks about Iran sending Fatih-110 and Zulfikar missiles to Russia with the range of 300 and 700 kilometers respectively. And also, obviously, the brand new best friend of Russia, North Korea. They also will be exchanging their military equipment and military achievements between these two countries in the near future. My only question here is, what if Russia receives something like this empty tank shells from one of these countries? Because at this point I don't think too many people treat uh, Putin seriously. But that's not <laughs> the worst news for Russia. Because, according to the British intelligence report, since the beginning of this war Russia already lost at least 90 aerial vehicles. And the most interesting part is that a quarter or even entire third of these losses were non-combat related. Besides that, every military aerial vehicle has a certain lifespan in so-called fly hours. And because Russia was planning to capture Ukraine just in three days, and obviously right now it is a little bit longer than they anticipated. And that is why this maintenance and service of these planes they is already coming due. And because there's international sanctions and the Russian internal military industrial complex is not maybe as developed as these components that they use inside their planes, maybe in the very near future Russians will have extreme difficulties repairing these planes. 
And you guessed it right. <laughs> this will happen more or less exactly at the same time, when Ukrainians will start receiving a lot of fighter jets from the West, to making situation even worse for Russians. And so yes, now as promised, let's go to the south, where I'll talk about key city defenses being almost finally fully breached, and then we'll finalize everything in the east. And so before I go to the south, if you don't mind, can you please like this video and subscribe to my channel if you like this style of daily updating. You can also follow me on Instagram, because I recently discovered a pretty interesting feature, is that allows me to create a so-called broadcasting channel, basically a free-to-join group, where I can post memes to you guys and some of my personal pictures. The link will be down below. And so yes, back to the south, and our first stop brings us to Kerch Bridge, also commonly known as the Crimean Bridge, and as you can see from this picture, locals were able to hear some very loud noises and some very bright uh, fire, okay, which is coming next to this bridge. As for now, obviously, there are no official statements from the Russian side. Okay, next we refer to the report by the Institute for the Study of War, and they claim that the situation around Robotini, Verbovi frontline, is not 100% clear, mainly because Russian military correspondents, they stopped so intensely covering this specific front line. And if you remember from the past, this is exactly what happens when Russians start to lose. And so they do not want their followers or viewers to see that basically Russia is losing. And what it actually means is that Ukrainians most likely were able to finally breach Robotini Verbovi frontline. And just a few of the confirmations of this actually happening is that we do have a geolocational footage which shows that Russians are shelling the trenches, which are only approximately one kilometer away to the west of Verbovi, and these trenches trenches are empty, they're shelling advancing Ukrainians. And obviously, these were the trenches which were previously occupied by Russians as the last line of defense before actual settlement. It was also mentioned that at least four assault groups of Ukrainians along with their military vehicles were also spotted very close to Verbovi, way past these defense lines, which was consisting of the so-called dragon teeth. Extremely ineffective defenses. And additionally, some sources close to the Russian military, they reported that Kremlin cancelled the plans to redeploy 106th Airborne Division to Robotini frontline to assist those 7th and 76th Airborne Divisions operating there. Which basically means that Russians kinda gave up protecting Robotini frontline and they started retreating back to the next key city in the south, where they obviously expect Ukrainians such as, for example, Tokmak. And, if you remember from my previous episode, potentially Russians are even considering to do a goodwill gesture in Tokmak. It might not happen, the probability is still, I don't know, 50-50, but just let me know in the comments how much Russian defenses will be focused on Tokmak rather than Militopol. And so yes, now let me give you a similar quick update from the east of Ukraine, where recently another sabotage just happened. And the one I'm talking about here, so let's talk about this first really quick, is that it happened in Belgorod. Russian Freedom of Russia Legion entered this city and allegedly engaged in combat activities with the local authorities and most likely FSB officers. At this very moment we do not have detailed information about what is actually happening and the losses, if any, from both sides, but as soon as I know something I will make sure to report on it. And then, as we go back to Ukraine and refer once again to the report by the Institute for the Study of War, it claims that Russians and Ukrainians continue their combat activities along Kupiansk Svatovia Krimina frontline, with neither of the sides achieving significant success. But Ukrainians, on the other hand, are able to achieve some marginal advances next to Bakhmut. Besides that, Ukrainians using long-range artillery was able to destroy a Russian multiple rocket launcher called BM-21 Grad located next to Svatovia. And to make things absolutely unbearable for Russians, as you can see from this video allegedly from the eastern front lines, in just one unsuccessful offensive that they attempted recently, they were able to lose up to eight 
military vehicles, including armored personnel carriers, infantry fighting vehicles, and obviously tanks. And if you want to see this fully uncensored video of absolutely devastating event for the Russians and also support my channel starting only as little as $4 for the entire month, please consider checking my Patreon. The link is down below and there is one week of free access for you to see if you like it or not. And in response to that, Russians did something what they do the best. They attacked another civilian infrastructure in Avdivka, as you can see from this video, and they basically targeted a local chemical plant. But just overall, Ukrainians in the last 24 hours were able to intercept 34 out of 44 Russian Shahid drones. And also speaking about Avdivka, Ukrainians were able to destroy a Russian armored vehicle called Terminator to the north of it, so it is safe to say Terminator got terminated. But wait, there is more. The most significant event recently happened in Bakhmut, because those Wagner soldiers with, which gradually started returning to Ukraine, as you already know about their presence, at least 500 of them landed in Bakhmut. And according to Russians fighting in this area, Wagner soldiers came there to assist them. But first of all, uh, 500 soldiers will not make much difference, because there are thousands of them fighting every single day, but still this might be a significant help for Russians. But most importantly, it is because now Wagner do not have one unified leader for them, one unified commander. Wagner soldiers are kind of there doing they don't even know what. They kind of want to fight, they do not have direct orders, and whenever regular conventional Russian commanders, they say them, go here, do this, they kind of do not feel like following these orders, and they basically sabotage the Russian army. And in my personal opinion, there could be at least two reasons for this. The very first reason, obviously, was the failed mutiny by Prigozhin several months ago, and then they know that Putin never forgives traitors, and even though they are back in Ukraine and some of them even signed the contracts with the Ministry of Defense of Russia, they kind of have this feeling that maybe they, their lives will be wasted, because the commanders will order them to do some kind of suicidal missions. That is why they are in Ukraine, but they're not willing to fight. At least not on the full side of Russians. And the assumption number two is that they somehow want to revenge the elimination of Prigozhin and some of their military commanders. So they are making it extremely complicated for conventional Russian forces to perform their offensive activities in Bakhmut. And in the meantime, at least in the meantime, they are not doing it as directly as maybe they would want to. But one thing for certain is that Wagner once again is back in Ukraine, in areas such as Bakhmut. The number of these soldiers will most likely, at least for now, not be enough to change the course of this war. And at the same time, it's like, you know when you were a kid and you had your mom doing something and you were trying to help her and she was like, just leave me alone, I'll do it much better without you, you're just making things worse. This is exactly what I think is happening right now in Bakhmut between Wagner and the rest of the Russian military. But as always, just please let me know in the comments what do you think, and if you don't want to miss any of the future potential crucial updates coming soon, just please consider subscribing to my channel. It only takes one click. Thank you so much patrons for your support and see you tomorrow.